Perfect time. I have just put the finishing touches on our cubby house. Do you like it? Do you think Meg and our friends will like it too? Me too. What's your favorite part? Mine's the new front and back door. Oh great, Meg is coming with our friends. She is gonna be so surprised when she gets here. How about when she gets here, we yell, surprise! You'll know when she gets here because the door will creak. Let's listen for it. Surprise! Oh, wow! Look at this. This place looks amazing. But I really didn't expect it to look like this. Uh, what? You didn't expect it to look so awesome? No, I didn't expect it to be pink and orange and, and blue. Oh, you don't like pink and orange and blue? Well, well, what are your favorite colors? It's not that I don't like those colors. I just expected more red and green and gold. Oh, I didn't know those were your favorite colors. We can add them. Actually, what's your favorite color? Great, we can add more of that color too. It's not that they're my favorite colors. It's just that red and green and gold are Christmas colors. I thought we were decorating the cubby house for a Christmas party. Oh, we definitely will decorate for Christmas, but I thought we should fix it up first and get it looking great. Then we can decorate for Christmas together. Okay, when are we gonna decorate for Christmas? Uh, I don't know, soon? Yeah, but what day? Um, before Christmas? Yeah, but what day? I need to know exactly the day. Oh, sorry, Meg. I don't have that planned. Uh, when do you think we should decorate? Today. Oh, great. Did you bring your Christmas decorations? Oh, no. Then we can't really decorate today. Well, what if Sam comes and we haven't decorated for Christmas yet? Oh no, good point. We will want to make sure it's done before Sam comes, but how will we know when Sam's going to get here? Well, do you know anyone who might know when Sam's coming? Hmm. Do you know when Sam's coming? Hmm. Oh, that gives me a great idea. We should ask our friends. I just did ask our friend. Oh, sorry, we should ask other friends. Can you think of anyone else who knows Sam? Yes, how about his best friend, Jordan? Excellent idea. I think Charles knows where Jordan lives. He lives really close by and at a house with a red door. Charles, can you go ask Jordan if he knows when Sam is coming? Great, off you go. Well, what do you think we should do while we wait for Charles III to come back? Hmm, well, Charles III is going to a house with a red door, and that reminds me of a fun game to play. I love games. And can they play too? Of course. Here's how we play. I have lots of different houses, and in one of these houses is Charles III. So I'm gonna hide him in one of the houses and then you guys will guess what house he's in. We sing a little, little jingle. Little dog, little dog, come out and play. What color house are you in today? I'm gonna need some help, Rainbow Bear. Which color house is he in? Rainbow Bear thinks the red house. <gasps> nope, not today. Oh no, Drax the dragon, what do you think? Well, pretty obvious what color Drax is. Drax guesses the greenhouse. Ooh, not in that one either. Friends, I need some help. Pops and Sally both think it's definitely the blue house. Ooh, nope. Oh no. What about Gerald? What color do you think? He's gone the same as Drax. Ger Gerald is orange. He says it's the orange house. Ooh, not today. Okay. We'll leave two more. Rainbow Unicorn, what do you think? Purple is Rainbow Unicorn's favorite color. 
Not in the purple house. Oh, pineapple, guess the right house. Well, we all know what color is pineapple's favorite color, the yellow house. We found him. Pineapple wins, well done. Did you have fun guessing what color house? Me too, playing with all of our friends. But what should we do now? Charles III hasn't come back. We're still waiting to hear when Sam's gonna get here. Luckily, my friend Dom has come today to sing a song with me in Music Time with Meg. I'm sure he's out in the garden. Do you think he's ready to play for us now? He's got a special Christmas song all about angels and wise men. I think we should go to the garden and see. Let's go head out to the garden now. Music time with Meg, everyone. Big welcome to my friend, Dom. He's here to sing with us about some wonderful news. So why don't you join us? On a very special night, the world was changed forever. On a very special night, the Savior King arrived. The angels bring the news to shepherds in the field. Come as you are, come and see, Creator God revealed. Wonderful news, the King is born, lying in a manger. Wonderful news, the King of all, Jesus Christ the Savior. Up in the sky the angels sing, welcoming the Maker. Come as you are to see the King, Jesus Christ the Savior. There were wise men in the east who knew a king was coming. They read the prophecies and waited for a sign. They saw it in, in the sky, a bright new star appeared, showing the way, telling them the promised one is here. Wonderful news, the king is born, lying in the manger. Wonderful news, the king of all, Jesus Christ the Savior. Up from the sky the angels sing, welcoming the Maker. Wonders you are to see the King, Jesus Christ the Savior. God with us, here to save, close to us, not far away. God with us. Far away, wonderful news, the king is born, lying in the manger. Wonderful news, the king of all, Jesus Christ the Savior. Up in the sky the angels sing, welcoming the maker. Come as you are to see the king, Jesus Christ the Savior. Jesus Christ the Savior, Jesus Christ the Savior. Good work everyone, thanks Dom. That was such a fun song. It was so great to see Dom today too. It sure was. And I can't wait to see if Charles has spoken to Jordan. Me too. I was wondering, without Jordan, how will we know when Sam will come? Oh wait, look around. I don't think all of our friends made it back from the garden. Yeah, they did, look. Oh, I'm glad you're back, but I feel like we're missing someone. Can you look around and see if any of our friends are missing? <gasps> pineapple! Pineapple! Did you grab pineapple? No, did you grab pineapple? No, I hope he's okay. I feel like he should have made it back to the cubby house by now though. Where did you last see him? In the garden when we were singing with Dom, but then he went chasing a butterfly. <gasps> oh no! Where did you last see him? At the window. <laughs> oh look, he's out the window. Oh, 
pineapple. We should go grab him. Oh, thank goodness. We were so worried about you, Pineapple. I'm so glad that our friends were able to find you. Oh, Pineapple says he's sorry. He sat on baby Jesus' parents. Uh, that's a weird thing to say. I, I hope he didn't bump his head and get confused. Wait, actually that reminds me of a big confusing question I had. Uh, really? You had a question about sitting on Jesus' parents? <laughs> no, I had a question about Jesus in the book of Isaiah. Oh, that makes more sense. What's your question? Do you mind if I use the felt board to help us remember? No, go for it. Great, so our first question was why would God change our world? And we said it was because of sin. Yes, we read how the Israelites had forgotten God. And God said that even a donkey remember who takes care of it. Then we asked, what would the new world look like? And we read about God's, how God would be with us. Yes, Isaiah said that there will be a covering for every person to protect them and a place of safety. And we had this little shed. Last week I was worried about how we, God would be with us because he's holy and can't be with sin. And we learned that the angel took Isaiah's sin away with a hot coal. Correct again, but he had a perfect plan for taking away sin forever. Like we finally got rid of all the cubby house, rubbish in the cubby house for good. So my question is, if Isaiah was telling the Israelites to be waiting for a sign, a new world where God would be with them and take away sin, how long were they going to have to wait for? How would they know when God's perfect plan had come? I know what goes here in the picture because I've read it in my Bible. But the Israelites didn't have the whole Bible. How would they know? Wasn't Isaiah making them confused? What, he told them to look for a branch, not a baby. And if I was looking for God to come, I'd be looking in the sky. I love how you use the felt board to put all the pictures together. Do you know who fits in this picture too? That's right, Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. Pineapple's bottom? Oh, you're funny. Everyone seems to be in a silly mood today. Anyways, you made a really good point about how the Israelites would know when God's promised one would come. Exactly. How would they know what to look for? Mm, I read about this in Isaiah chapter 7. God says he will give them a sign. God will give the promised one a sign. Like a stop sign? Stop. Look, I'm the promised one who will fix the world. No. Like a sign on a building that says, God's promised one here, fixing the world. No, he gives the Israelites a sign for what to look for. It's in my Bible journal. Isaiah chapter seven, verse 14, he says, but the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be pregnant. She will have a son and she will name him Emmanuel. So the Israelites knew he would be born was a human and his mom would be special. You, yes, you're right. She will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So God did help them know a bit about what to look for, but he didn't tell them exactly when it would happen. No, he didn't tell them, but he did give them more clues about the promised one. They are all throughout the book of Isaiah. We're going to need to find a Mary and Joseph to fill in the board. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna need to find out when Sam is coming and what happened to Charles. Mm -hmm. You are so silly. What? Stop saying pineapple's bottom. Oh, I'm a bit tired of sitting. Maybe we should get up and stretch. That was a great stretch. And while we were stretching, look who came back. Charles III and our friend, Jordan. Hi, Meg. Hi, Megan. Hey, Jordan. Can you guys say hi to Jordan? Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. The cubby house looks great. Sam will be so excited to see it. But we asked you to come because we really don't want him to see it like this. Why not? Because we wanted to have a surprise Christmas party for him, and this place is not ready for Christmas. Is that why Charles came to get me? He said I needed to come tell you 
when Sam was going to arrive and to bring Christmas decorations. Yep, we don't know when he's coming and we thought you might know when Sam is coming and we'll use any decorations if you brought them. I do. I have the date written down in my calendar. It's right here. Sam is coming in 21 days. Great. Can we borrow your calendar for the cubby house? I'm sorry, but I kind of need it. It shows me today I have soccer practice. Which I'm sorry, but I need to leave now to get there in time. But I did bring you the only Christmas decoration I could find. Sam will be so excited to see it. Oh yeah, that's okay Jordan, thanks for coming. You were a huge help and we love our new sign. We sure do, thanks Jordan, we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Oh, oh and by the way, Pineapple has something on his bottom. <laughs> oh Pineapple, I'm sorry we didn't listen to you. Or to you, looks like Pineapple did sit on Jesus' parents. Hmm. Well, now we have a sign to count down to when we will celebrate baby Jesus at Christmas, but how are we going to know when we need to decorate by? Oh, maybe we can make another sign to count down how many days until Sam comes. That's a perfect idea. I can make one at home. <gasps> that would be wonderful. Wow. What another great time of fun and learning. And singing. Mm-hmm. With all of our friends. Can't wait to see you next time in the Cubby House. Bye. Bye. In the Cubby House, it's time for...